Thank you very much for joining us on Unity Global News. Today is Tuesday, 3rd October 2023, equivalent to the 18th of Rabi'ul Awal, 1445 after Hijra. And these are the headlines of the stories. Federal government and labor reach truce. Planned strike suspended for one month. Chicago University releases Tinubu's records to Artiku. Eight killed in fresh plateau attack. On the foreign scene, ousted Niger leader to file legal case against purchasists in sports on Falcons bonuses. Players lament slavery treatment as NFF insists on as NFF insists money paid. Those were the headlines and for their details and other stories. My name is Shuaibu Muhammad Doro. The organized labor last night suspended its planned nationwide strike for one month following an agreement with the federal government. Though details of the Memorandum of Understanding suspending the strike were sketchy at the time of this report, the agreement newsmen gathered was reached very late at night. The meeting was reconvened yesterday for both government and labor to find common ground and avert the planned strike by the organized labor to force the government to address the suffering and pains of Nigerians occasioned by the petrol subsidy removal. Recall that President Bola Tinubu had on Sunday evening succumbed to the 35,000 Naira Provisional Wage Award demanded by Labour after his initial 25,000 for the average low-grade worker to run for six months was rejected. Members of the organised Labour team present, present, present are the NLC President Joe Ajero, the, the, his TUC counterpart Festus of C4, the NLC General Secretary Ima Ubaja, the TUC Secretary General Nuhu Toru, among others. On the government team are the National Security Advisor NSA Nuhu Ribadu, the Minister of Finance Wale Edun, Minister of Information and National Orientation Muhammad Idris, and of course the Minister of State for Labour in Keiruka Ongejeocha. Chicago State, Chicago State University, United States of America, has released to former Vice President Atiku Abubakar the academic records of President Bola Tinubu. The CSU released the documents to Atiku on Monday in compliance with the order of a United States District Court in Northern District of Illinois. In ordering the CSU to release Tinubu's academic record, a U.S. District Judge dismissed the President's objection. Atiku intends to use the CSU academic record in pursuit of his appeal at the Supreme Court where he is challenging Tinubu's victory in the February 25 presidential election. But Tinubu's legal team has argued that the document would be of no use at the Supreme Court. Former Minister of Petroleum Resources, Dezeni Alice Madu Ake, appeared before the Westminster Magistrate Court in the United Kingdom on Monday over an alleged £100,000 bribe. The district judge, Michael Snow, granted Alison Madu Ake a £70,000 bail. Snow further imposed other terms on Alison Madweke, including an 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew, an electronic tag to be worn by her at all times, and a £70,000 surety to be paid before, the, before she could leave the court building. Although she did not formally enter a plea, her attorney, Mark Bowen, informed the court that she would plead not guilty. Reuters reported her next court appearance will be at South Walk Crown Court, which deals with serious criminal cases on October 30. The UK's National Crime Agency said it suspected Dezeni had accepted bribes in return for awarding multi-million pound oil and gas contracts. Uh, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has secured an arrest warrant for former Minister of Petroleum Resources, Dezeni Alisin Madweke. The EFCC acting spokesperson, Dele Oyewale, confirmed the development to newsmen on Monday. 
Meanwhile, the Anti-Graft Agency has also initiated extradition proceedings to bring the former minister back to Nigeria. Recall that Alison Madweke was arraigned yesterday at the Westminster's Court in London, United Kingdom, following alleged bribery allegations. Although the charges preferred against her at the London Court are different from the 13-count charges bordering on money laundering, the EFCC has raised charges against her. And no fewer than eight persons were killed and three others injured in an attack by yet-to-be-identified assailants at Adu. Call district of Basa local government area of Plateau State in north central Nigeria. The attack was carried out on Sunday evening at the market square in the community. Narrating his experience on the sad incident, Denjuma Avu, who lost two of his children to the assailants and six relations, expressed dismay at the attackers who stormed the village and executed the dastardly attack, shooting at the people who were at the mini market square. The deceased, comprising of five males, one female, and two minors, have been buried at the village cemetery, while the injured are receiving treatment at the hospital. The Nigerian Air Force on Monday said its, fair, its air strikes destroyed terrorist hideouts in the Tumbuns located in the Tumbuns, located on the fringes of Lake Chad in Borno State. The, NF, the, NF, the NAF said it has also destroyed strategic logistics basis of the terrorists in the area. The Director of Public Relations and Information, Air Commodore Edward Gapquet, in a statement noted that the noted that Tumbun Fulani and Tumbun Shetu were struck between September 27 and 30 and 30, 2023. Gapquet stated that the strikes were carried out when activities of terrorists in the locations were confirmed to have constituted a threat to military formations and law abiding Nigerians residing within their locations. About 35 persons are feared dead following an explosion in an illegal oil refining site in Ibas community, Imoha local government area of River State. It was gathered that the incident occurred lately Sunday, late on Sunday night when some people in the community, numbering over 40, were scoping petroleum products. A close source in the community identified as Emmanuel said the victims were selling the products at the refining site when the place suddenly went up in flames. He further said people from neighbor neighborhood, people from neighboring Isiopo in Ikwere local government area of the state, Iba and Uduoha in Umohua local government area were affected. The Taraba State Police Command on Monday confirmed the electrocution of a family of four around the Nyavo area of Jalingo, the state capital. The command's public relations officer, Mr. Abdullah Osman, in a statement said the incident happened around 11 a.m. on Monday and suspected that it resulted from a power surge. He added that many houses within the neighborhood experienced high electric voltage, which might have led to the fire outbreak that inflicted burns on the victims. We'll take you to the foreign scene. Lawyers for Niger's ousted president say they are filing a legal case in the West African country against those behind the coup that deposed the democratically elected leader. The lawyers for Mohamed Bazoum, who was overthrown on July 26 and has since been detained, also said in a statement that they were appealing to the United Nations Human Rights Council. The complaint, seen by AFP on Monday, is aimed at new strongman general Abdurrahmani Tiani and all others. It constitutes a civil action and alleges attack and conspiracy against state authority, crimes and offenses committed by civil servants and arbitrary arrests and confinements. One of the lawyers, Dominic in Chospe, said, uh, Dominic in Chospe said the case is expected to be lodged in the next few days with a court in the capital, Niamey. Bazoum filed a lawsuit with a court of the Economic Community of West African State ECOWAS on September 18. His Senegalese lawyer, Seydou Diane, has said he has been held in his residence since the coup. 
We we'll now look at some sports stories. 43 days after the conclusion of the 2023 Women's World Cup in Australia and New Zealand, the Nigeria Football Federation and the Super Falcons seem headed for another showdown after the players stated that they were treated like slaves following their unpaid bonuses and allowances over the years. Just before the start of the FIFA Women's World Cup, newsmen reported that the Nigerian ladies threatened to boycott their opening game. They eventually sealed an agreement with the NFF that they would receive a $100 daily camp allowance, a $3,000 win bonus, and $1,500 bonus for a draw. FIFA later announced that each player at the tournament would receive a minimum of $30,000. However, the players claimed they had received less than half of their daily camp wages and no match bonuses from the NFF. And that story brings us to the end of the news. Uh, thank you for staying tuned and continue to listen to the rest of our programs on Unity TV. My name is Shoaibu Muhammad Doro. Thank you for watching.